To measure static acoustic compliance, first you need to look in the ear canal and make sure that it's cleared of any wax or debris because a small amount might clog the tiny probe tubes and then make your measurements misleading. The ear tap is pressed into the ear canal and a tight seal is obtained. Then positive pressure is increased with the air pump to get a seal. So it feels a bit like being on an airplane. So you pull the person's ear back, you twist the, t the probe in. It doesn't hurt, you just need to get it in tight so you can get an airtight seal. And then a positive pressure is put in. So it feels like you're going up on an airplane or up a to the top of the Empire State Building with a pressure change. The tympanometer will tell you whether you've gotten the airtight seal or whether you need to get a different size tip. If you see the word leak on the machine, that means that you need to take the probe out and try again, uh, maybe with the same tip, maybe with a different tip. Now once you have a seal, 200 decapascals of air pressure is put in. So it's a push of air pressure into the ear canal which pushes your tympanic membrane inward. At this point, the tympanic membrane is immobilized by the positive air pressure and the compliance of the outer ear is measured. A small hole in the tympanic membrane would indicate a very big ear canal volume. So the first measurement, once all that pressure is put in, is we're measuring the ear canal volume, the amount of air volume in that ear canal. If there's a very large ear canal volume greater than 3.0. That means that there's a hole in the tympanic membrane and that the air pressure is going through the ear canal into the middle ear space. So our normal measurements would be 0.3 to 3.0. Now after that measurement is taken, the um, air pressure is slowly removed. So we go from positive 200, not slowly removed, we go from positive 200 decapascals down to negative 200 decapascals. And all along that way, we are measuring the admittance or how much sound is getting through. So this is the static acoustic compliance. The normal values for static acoustic compliance are rather broad. Um, you need to know the middle ear values um, because the, well, the extremes are clearer than the normal values. There's more of a wide range. There's differences in adults and children, and there's differences with age and gender. You get a paper printout, and like I said, the values can range from very low compliance, which means that the, there's reduced elasticity in the tympanic membrane and that it's not moving at its best. It could be due to age, or maybe you had a hole, a perforation in the tympanic membrane that healed over with scar tissue, and therefore it doesn't move as well or there's fluid in the middle ear, which is affecting the compliance, or the immobility of the middle ear bones. Very high compliance suggests that there's an interruption in the chain of the middle ear bones, so disarticulate middle ear bones, which could possibly be caused by disease, fracture, or abnormal elasticity of the tympanic membrane. 